Happy holiday. Happy holiday. While the merry bells keep ringing. Happy holiday. The holiday season. Welcome to the 56th episode of the Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast. My name is Jason Knight, president and founder of Chicago's own Supernatural Occurrence Studies and host of the show. And the unknown. With me this evening is... Uh, Dave Black. Hey there, guys. <laughs> also joining... It's uh, So Damn Paranormal. Is that me? Thank you. Yes. Yeah, that's me. Our Oscar Specter. Oscar Specter. I, I still up. am not uh, Producer married, married extraordinaire. to that slogan. I, mean, I, I, I think we could probably come up with something better than All right. Well, let's, let's so work on that. So damn paranormal. Maybe the listeners could send us uh, a new slogan for the show. We, we, How about kind of, sort of paranormal sometimes, <laughs> maybe. What's up with your voice? Were you gargling like gravel? <sighs> He's yeah, doing a Harvey guys. Firestein impression right. tonight. The, tonight, I'm really sick. We had to record. The show must go on. This is what we put ourselves through to bring our listeners the ear sex that they want. Mm -hmm. um, so please excuse my voice. Ear to course. You sound very ear, phlegmy. Ear to course. I don't nice. know. I don't know if that Oscar, works. Oscar, do you have the dum dum ching sound effect? <clears throat> I have to make a sound effect. <laughs> can we get an sure ooga? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure ooga, I can find chaka, one. Yeah. Ooga. Okay. Um, the release of this episode is on Christmas. So, Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad, Buona Natale, Happy Hanukkah, and Happy Kwanzaa. Crazy Kwanzaa. And for Dave, Happy Holidays. Thank you. I am um, a-religious. A-religious. What is, what is a-religious exactly? I is just, that atheist? I, no, it just means I don't have, I don't, I have a religion that I identify as being. I'm, a, I'm an ethical humanist. I like that. I'll take it. Which is I'll actually, uh, there's a church of the Ethical Humanist Society right near my my childhood home. Are you kidding me? No. I'm not. In that Jewish neighborhood that you grew up in, there's an Ethical Humanist Church? Uh, ethical Humanist Society, yes. And they um, they meet just like churches do, and they hmm. talk about things and do good deeds and whatnot. Do they just have, like, cheeseburgers and Coke for communion? I mean, what, what, what is this? I'm not exactly sure. I've been I've I've actually been meaning to attend uh, one of their gatherings just to see what it's all about. It'd be interesting. Well, report back and let us know after you join that crazy crazy cult. I guess. Eerily silent this evening is Mr. Joe Erie. Yeah, right. Joe's not here. Uh, Christmas time. He works for a global logistics company. This is his business busiest time of year. We'll so, say it's something like UPS, but right. not not UPS. UPS right. right. Probably uh, the other one that you're thinking about. <laughs> so DHL. this is his, not the DHL <laughs> um, from Sopranos. Remember the DHL, and then they open right. the door and they shotgun them. Anyway, sure. so he can't join us tonight. Um, before we begin with with today's topic, uh, I want to run down you know some of the housekeeping stuff. How people could get a hold of us. Yeah, for sure. We have all new. Contact info, social information. Yeah. So, Oscar, do you remember our brand new website? Don't quiz me. Don't quiz me. <laughs> Don't quiz me. Is it ChicagoGhostPodcast.com? I think so. Yeah, yes. That's it. Ding, yeah. ding, ding, ding. Yes. 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 Yeah. Brand new website. We have a brand new Facebook page. I should really go on that one. At Chicago Ghost Podcast go on, on Facebook. Right yeah. At Chicago Ghosts on Instagram and Twitter. Isn't it pronounced Twitter? No, I think it's Twatter or Tweeter. Twat, twat, Twitter. Twitter. Twitty. 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 Uh, it's Tweety. Twi Twitter. Twi the tweet. Twitter. Yes, the tweet platform. Yes. At one. Chicago Ghost yeah. Twitter and Instagram. Contact at Chicago Ghost Podcast is our email. Send us any thoughts, comments, criticisms, show ideas. What else does Jay sound like today? Who, what other Who else? Actor? I, yeah. Earlier I was thinking Kathleen Turner. Yeah. But it, Romancing it, the Stone. It eventually turned into, uh, you know, Harvey Firestein. Yeah. yeah, I did that intro probably ten times because I couldn't complete the complete sentence. Right. <clears throat> and uh, The Supernatural oh. Occurrence Studies podcast. And I was laughing. You were. Um, yeah. I good. kept dying on... on Podcast. Yes, it, just, it was really funny. It still is. It was very 
annoying. It's okay. Contact at Chicago Ghost Podcast is our new email. Look up Chicago Ghost Podcast on yeah. iTunes. Yes. Do you remember when we first... Subscribe. Per- Please leave a rating. We need ratings. We lost all of our ratings uh, with the website switch over. It was a That's snafu right. on my part. Hmm. So all those ratings we worked hard for are gone. We're starting fresh. So we are... Uh, essentially, Oscar is begging you for ratings. Do you, do you remember... <clears throat> I'm on my knees. Do you remember ratings. when we started Supernatural Current Studies way back in 1997? Um I what was it, 1998? 1998. Yeah, I think it was 98. Started. February 1998. Um, I always said, like, I don't I don't think we should ever use the word ghost, because ghost you conjures conjures up... Um, Hollywood-esque. Yeah, it, 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 it immediately discredits you when you use that word. And now it's like, you know, in our website and all that. <laughs> 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 It is. Cut to today. You know, you know, what, you know what really... Flash forward 20 years. You know what would really help your throat is if you uh, vaped some more. You I'm want not. to get some of this nice, phlegmy chocolate down your throat, too? I'm not trying to stay above water here. Yeah, but Dave, we explained this in episode 55. The Chicago Ghost Podcast domain, that, that name, those are the three top keywords uh, that you would use to search us. Yeah. So that helps our search engine optimization. I I'm strategic about everything I do, Oscar. Dave, uh, I mean, everything I do is strategic. Y- you are well, just, just a capitalist, just, for sure. Just, yeah. just to you know, put it out there, we are using the, the term ghost in the um, layman's sense of the things that we speak of and research uh, are what would be commonly referred to as a ghost, yet um, we do not subscribe to the... Um, I guess the typical l- image that comes to mind of the chain yeah, rattling. I, I feel like the the phrase I just said would probably be best said by Jeff Goldblum. And so how would he say that? It, it just seems like a very uh, Jeff uh, Goldblum uh, cheeseburgers type of uh, phrase to uh, say. Yeah. And there we go, Jeff Goldblum, everybody. Not so much. Yeah. Uh, not so much an impression as as more of a mannerisms of Jeff Goldblum. Of Got it. Jeff Goldblum. Um, but anyway, my point is that uh, even though we are using the term ghost, we uh, don't want you to think that we are under the impression that invisible dead people are wandering the earth because they can't get to the other side. We're not saying it's not possible. Yeah. But that's not. We just don't know. That's not our, uh, you know, we don't really specify that. We keep an open, an things. open mind, yeah. an open palate, if you will. Yeah. So we're all we about, you know, know if there's is. transgendered ghosts or whatever, you know, we're okay with that, you know. I mean, it's 2017. Yeah, they can rub their, you know, whatever genitalia on our ears while we, you know, sit here and talk. And I'm fine with it. Are you fine with it? I'm fine with it. Oscar, I mean, I, I can't even. Pretty, I mean, I'm excited for it. I can't yeah. even feel it. So <laughs> it doesn't bother me. Yeah. I'm, well, you don't have any feeling at all. Like you don't experience these things like we do. This is true. That's but true. um, you know, um, yeah, I'm, you know, I, I'm fine with it. All right. Well, I'm glad we established that. <laughs> Oscar, I was you, worried. Did you know that on the new website, you know, ChicagoGhostPodcast dot com. I heard about that. Yeah. Oh, is if there a cl- website that we do we <laughs> have a new is. website? Yeah. If you click on special offers, guys, there's a lot of great things, great sponsors that our uh, listeners could take advantage of. So if you click on special offers, like Toys R Us, is Toys no, R Us one of them? Toys R Us. <laughs> Who brought this guy? If you click on special offers, Perk Plus. One of the is things Perk you could get one of them? is a free audiobook and a free trial. Linens and things to Audible.com. Mm-hmm. Oh, Audible.com. Yeah. That's um, the books on tape thing. It's there's no tape anymore. Well, yeah, but you know it's still you commonly referred to, to as books device. on tape. I mean, we still call like, I don't know, do we still call things videos? Is that still a thing? I think so. I call them videos. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people do. Yeah, but they're not videos, right? So they could do that by clicking on special I mean, offers, get a free audiobook and a free trial to Audible.com. Right. What uh, audio book would you recommend? Link. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really. I'm into, um, oh, it was the, the Showtime show, uh, Any American time. Gods. Oh, yeah. American Gods. Hmm. Um, I'm you... listening to that, and it's... 
Oh, okay. It's great. I was going to recommend. Uh, I was going to recommend the latest Ann Coulter book. And we're not going to go there. <laughs> so American Gods, Audible. Uh, I I heard that earlier this year, too, before the show came out. Oh, did you really? Yeah. So you listened to it on Audible? Oh yeah. Did you like it? Oh yeah. Oh, dude, it's good. It. You know what's great so about good. you know what's great about Audible dot com is uh, you don't have to know how to read. This is true. Yeah. Yeah. Which you know is great in these days. If listeners, this is this, 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 these days and time, uh, you know, uh, I just saw something today that fourteen percent of Americans don't know how to read. Fourteen percent. Fourteen percent. Now I don't know if that includes like toddlers and stuff because that would kind of make probably sense. Probably say no. But um. Yeah, fourteen percent of Americans cannot read. And if you ever go like on any comments section anywhere, you're like, man, these people don't even know how to spell the racial slurs they're using. You know? <laughs> yeah, I see that a lot. What well, is a Nygar? If they, if listeners <laughs> don't want to go to special offers on ChicagosPodcast dot com, <laughs> take advantage of Audible. They go to uh, audibletrial dot com slash sos radio. Audibletrial dot com slash sos radio. Okay, easy. Something else under special offers, Oscar. What you else? You get ten percent off so like on any new subscription subscription to Loot Crate. To Loot so just Crate. like the taxes are off. You use Loot Crate, right? No, my my brother does. What does your brother get? What are some of the things he gets? Uh, he gets like themed shit, like in a box, like uh, Batman month, and he'll just get a bunch of Batman or Marvel or Lord of the Rings or a combination of all of them. Or if it's Christmas, he'll have like Christmas. Like socks that relate to a game he likes. I actually something. got a Whatever. Loot Crate subscription for my ex girlfriend right before we broke up for uh. her birthday, um, and uh, you know, she she enjoyed it. She what what came in it? Um, I can't I can't remember because we weren't exactly talking at the time. Um, but, but she liked it. Yeah, she liked it. it, it you know, they, it's like. So you get like a like a Deadpool bobblehead and like uh you know like a t-shirt and like a hat and maybe like a little like knickknack for the shelf type of thing and like you know it's just like a it's like i think it's like 19.99 a month and you know i think there's different subscriptions yeah Yeah. and your different subscriptions you can get like for instance you can get like an anime one or a superhero one or whatever um and then uh you know the general one will just be kind of a mix of everything and you get you you know you'll just get cool like pop culture stuff that you can uh you know, flaunts in your house. You could uh, either keep it or you can give it away as gifts. Yep. But it's like I got a Minecraft one for my kids once. I would say it was pretty cool. I Little would say it's and stuff. I yeah. would say it's like probably like fifty bu- fifty bucks worth of stuff. Like if you That's were gonna, good swag. Yeah, if you were to buy all that stuff individually or like sell it, like I'd say it's about fifty bucks worth of stuff. And the best thing is you don't have to go to stores. I hate going to stores. Stores give me anxiety. I hate them. I hate it. Well, they do give don't anxiety shop. for free. Yeah, I, 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 you know. So I'm if a, listeners go and they click on that link under special offers on chicagospodcast.com, they could receive 10% off any new subscription, but they got to do it on or before the 19th of every month before 9 p.m. Pacific yeah. to take advantage. And then enter offer code BRIDGE10. BRIDGE10. Bridge 10. My voice came out. BRIDGE10? B-R-I-D-G-E-10. Why is it BRIDGE? Number 10. That's just the promo code they gave us. Oh, okay. It's weird. Yep. And if you don't want to go to the website, try lootcrate.com slash SOS dash rate. Are you saying they're using SOS 10? No, it's Bridge 10. Like That's what they wanted me to use. That, That's know. how we get paid. Just Bridge saying, 10. Just saying. Kind of lost the... I think, I think you're saying it just to reiterate it, and I like it. Bridge no, 10. I'm not... No, Oscar, no, not all. And if <laughs> listeners wanted to get 30% off, a whopping 30% off any new GoDaddy service... Guess what? Right there under special offers, click the GoDaddy link. All of my websites are under GoDaddy. It's a all great, four of ours are under GoDaddy. Great website. And if you ever have a problem at all, any time of day or night, you can call them, and somebody actually picks up the phone and yep. talks to you. They'll walk you through it. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's great. Like you can literally call them up and be like, "Hey, I just started a new domain," or like. Let's say you have a, a business that you're doing. Like for me, I have uh, I have a side business that I run off of Facebook. Right. So what I was able to do is call call GoDaddy, get the domain name for the page that I wanted, and then have them walk me through bouncing it to my Facebook page. So if somebody puts in that website, it goes directly to my Facebook page. Nice. And uh, you know, if you Google the name of it. That's the first thing that shows up. That's really cool. So, yeah, great customer support. I love their chat support. I use their chat support all the time. I talk to them on the phone. Yeah. 
I actually well, however you prefer to do it. I really actually like talking to a customer service rep because you know I'm a, I'm a stand up comedian or I was a stand up comedian for years, so I get to like joke with them and stuff. Um, See, I hate that shit. I don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah, I was so making, chat. I was making a reservation at a hotel last night, and uh, so I'm taking my uh, girlfriend and her friends to uh, like a fancy hotel downtown for New Year's Eve, and. Uh, so the guy was like, uh, two queens? I'm like, well, one of the guys that's going to be with us is gay, so technically it's three queens. <laughs> he was like losing his ass. <laughs> now, see, I'm not that witty. So, um, yeah, 30% off any new GoDaddy service. Just click on that GoDaddy link under special offers, or you can go to trygodaddy.com slash SOS dash radio, Oscar. Right. Don't and go to uh, this this yeah. podcast tonight is sponsored by Lind- Lindor uh uh, it's assorted not, peppermint I'm chocolate not, truffles. Not getting a dime from Lindor, <laughs> so I would not promote them. But we do we do have some Lindor truffles here on on the on the table, and they're and they're delicious, and I recommend them. If Thank you me. happen to be standing in the line at um, Ross Dress for Less, go ahead and pick you up the single bag. Pick you up some. Pick up pick, pick you up you the up. single bag of assorted peppermint truffles that have probably been there since last year. Well, they kind of taste like it. But and finally, <laughs> oh no, finally, it says uh, Dave. Finally, oh six thirty two two thousand eighteen is well, the expiration. Of newer it. than the pop you got from the pizza guy. Yeah, that was expired in June. Expired in June. December. It was very, it was very flat. No, I have a stomachache. Well, an easy way for uh, listeners to support the show is shop through our our Amazon link. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That's oh, a big thing. We have an Amazon link, huh? We do. We have an Amazon shopping page. If you click on the Amazon banner right on our website, yeah. it'll take you to our own Amazon landing page. Shop is normal. Now, Anything you buy, we get a percentage of. Can we... It nice. doesn't that, cost the users can a we, dime. Using that link, can we purchase a full-size cardboard cutout of Tom Selleck? Um, I would say as, yes, you could. As Magnum P.I. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely. What about Higgins? I don't know Higgins. That was Magnum P.I.'s like butler friend or whatever he was. It's he was possible. Like sidekick. Butler friend? Yeah, I didn't know he had a butler. I, I don't know. It was like the guy that hung out with him, all of, like his sidekick. All right. Whatever. We're spending way too much time on this housekeeping I stuff. I don't know. Yeah. And there's also a donate button. If you love what you hear uh, on this true. show. You know, supporting independent podcasts is always the... Um, a nice fruitful thing to do, especially on the holidays. Yeah. yeah. People tend to enjoy doing that a lot. And it's, uh, you know, people support to NPR and your favorite podcast, your favorite TV show, coverage, things like that. We should have, uh, we should have one of those two episodes guys. that are just, <laughs> just, just, we should have entire episodes that are like the NPR. Like, sometimes you turn on NPR and be like, I want to listen to something, you know, in- intellectual. And they're like, and if you call now, you can get a, a mug and a bag. And if you donate $675, <laughs> you can get a mug and a bag, and a sticker. <laughs> um, and we should do that. We should have. We should have. You know, an entire. If someone's episode, willing to buy one of our T-shirts or something for six hundred and seventy-five dollars, yeah, I'll sell it to them. Yeah, sure. I won't. We won't say no to that. We won't stop them from that. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Want but I like it. the way Oscar put it. Support independent media, independent yeah. podcasting. We do it ourselves on our website under special offers. The way things are easy going. Easy donut donate button to use. <laughs> if the, you love what you hear on the show. Or if you just want us to continue doing what we're doing in hopes that we get hurt or die during one of our podcast wow. adventures, I don't care which, uh, go right. ahead and click that donate. Yeah, you know, that's very possible that we, we might die at some point on one of our adventures. Um, either, you, you know, who knows, like uh, an angry landowner who perhaps were trespassing on their property and didn't realize it. Um, overzealous police officer is definitely a possibility. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's see. Uh, a pack of wolves. Crazy hobo with a knife. Crazy hobo. Yeah, I mean, crazy a hobo with a knife. I mean, when we a were crazy ghost. When we were wandering around in that Rhyolite ghost town, there could have been a oh. crazy hobo around any corner. Uh, a mountain lion. <laughs> I mean, anything um, could happen. Guys. Uh, a bat. Serial us, killer. Bat gives us rabies in the eye. Asteroid. Asteroids. Get um, abducted uh, by, by asteroids. Yeah, um, you know, like we could maybe like cut our foot on like a bottle and like get an infection and like you know none of the antibiotics work and like you know they try all these different things over a period of weeks and then it spreads to our blood and next thing you know you know Oscar, we're could you surrounded by our family and friends and to. you know there's a lot of crying and sobbing and like holding hands and like we just 
kind of slip off into oblivion from this terrible, you know, blood infection that we got. And, uh, you know, it's it's really sad for our families. <clears throat> you know? I'm sad. I'm sad, too. Yeah. That would, <laughs> Did that you get would, a nightmare or something? That would suck if that happened. Right. Right. That would, that would be a bad thing. Are we thing. done with house cleaning? <laughs> I think we're done with house cleaning. Let's get into this This episode. house is clean. Support the show. All right. Before we start tonight's topic. Support the show so we can afford antibiotics when the time comes. Yes. Good ones. Before we start tonight's topic, I have to give a warning. Oh, yeah. Oh. Listener warning. Yeah, dude. Ooh. Listener beware. Spoiler alert. This is a nasty episode. Uh-oh. Topics, things we're going to discuss, crimes we're going to describe. It might trigger you and things like that. Are really, really heinous. I'm not, not kidding either. There's some pretty heinous shit going on in this uh, topic. This is and the word heinous topic. has the word anus in it. I know. I know. It's crazy. Full circle. And there is some anus involved in this particular thing. This is a topic that was notorious in Chicago in the early 80s. For about 90 months. No, 90... Two, what, yeah, two years. So I was going to write that out. Year and nope. a half. About I was going to say 90 minutes because it was about a year two and hours, a half. but no, I got it wrong in my head. But no one really talks about it. Yeah. It was kind of forgotten in the annals of history. Annals of history? Wow. Annals okay. of history. Too soon, Jay. Annals of history. <laughs> so, uh, listener, beware. You've been warned. Coco, beware. Ma, Ma Coco, beware. that means you. Turn this episode off. I don't want you listening to this episode, Ma. Ma. It's, when so you say ma, said, ma with that voice, it's great. Could I, ma, I like your sauce. Can I talk now? Can I get some more gravy on or my we pasta? We can continue this episode now. We can, we can continue. All right. So you guys ready? Oscar, you did research into this. Uh, yes, I did. Dave did not. That's fine. He's going through discovery as it unfolds. Yeah, I'm completely uh, unaware of what whatever the hell we're about to talk about. So you will hear so me audibly gasp. Get get your take on this, yeah. <gasps> like that. <laughs> <gasps> or, or you might retch, <gasps> as I did when I was researching this topic. All right. <gasps> so we're finally venturing into, on the, on the Supernatural Current Studies podcast, serial killers. Right. We've just touched on them, I think... In episode 13, our drunken podcast, we kind of talked about H.H. H. Holmes and Ed Gein. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Which we'll uh, get into in future podcast episodes when we cover serial killers. But this is the first time we're really delving into the minds and the crimes. Um, and they happen to be local to Chicago and the surrounding suburbs. That's true. Now, between May 23rd, 1981... And October 8th, 1982, in Chicago and the surrounding suburbs, the most brutal killing spree in the history of the Midwest took place. Yep. 20 women, possibly more, no one knows how many were killed, no one knows for sure, were kidnapped, brutalized, raped, mutilated, killed, and in some cases, cannibalized. What's even more shocking is, if that wasn't enough, is that these heinous crimes were perpetrated by four individuals working as a group. Right. This is unheard of. Before this time? Before this time. Yeah. And even still when, to this when day. Was, when did this happen? When did this take place? Between 81 and 82. May 23rd, 1981 to October 8th, 1982. Now, these four men who were responsible for these crimes became known as the Chicago Ripper Crew. Right. And then it, Say they that called, again. Because I, 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 the Chicago Ripper Crew. Yeah. The say Chi it, Oscar. Chicago Ripper Crew. Right. Um, Sorry, but I guys, should say, though, voice. before uh, these men were uh, discovered to be the four, they thought it was just one, and they called them the Chicago Ripper until they found out that it was four of them, and then they changed it to crew. So I just want to add that. Good. Now, these animals, they wanted to make women suffer. That was their goal, to make right. women suffer. It's not just one thing. It's To make them be powerless, to yeah. humiliate them, humiliate them. Yes. Victims were beaten. They were raped. Yeah. Gang they were raped. hacked and mutilated. Yeah. 
all the victims had one or both breasts removed ritualistically while they were still alive. And in some cases, those breasts were eaten. Yeah, exactly. By these four fucking scumbags. In his attic? And we'll get into that. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll progress. This is a progression. Right. It starts one way, and then it continues, and it kind of evolves into um, a more uh, more specifics into the how they killed these people, yeah. these women, and so. just some of the the atrocities that were committed to these women's bodies right. while they were still alive. Yeah, that's the worst part of it when you hear about it. Is like it wasn't post mortem. Now, now how during come this I've time, never, how come I've never heard of this? Why? Is that's this? the whole thing. Why? What's the? And we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that because it was so heinous. And the body count is so high, known, and it's, they know there's more. They just can't prove it. Well, the, I think the ones they know for sure are only like six of them. No, 20. No, but I mean, you, you so what know. So what happened to these guys? Were they... We're going to get there. Okay. <laughs> this is a story we're telling, Dave. Okay. Now, during this time... Just skip to the end. In Chicago and the surrounding suburbs, women's bodies were found in alleys, under bridges, in forest preserves... Cemetery in the Chicago River, literally everywhere. Bodies were strewn all over the Chicagoland area. Yeah. And no one was safe during this time. No woman was safe. As there was no set profile right. to That's these right. killings. They defied, they defied with profile. It was, they weren't just white women. It was Asian, Latino, it doesn't matter. The only thing they had in common is that they were women and they were large-breasted. Correct. That's it. Yep. Um, race didn't matter like you right. said oscar age or class or anything like that social they, class right. appearance yeah. profession daytime nighttime it didn't fucking right. matter yeah if you were a woman in the early 80s between 82 and 80 uh, excuse me 81 and 82 and you were walking alone you were a potential victim yes period yeah That's right. and as these bodies were being discovered cops had no idea what they were looking for they had not seen this level of brutality up to that point. Yeah, it was kind of new for them. Yeah. Now, as it turns out, members of the Ripper crew included a ringleader by the name of Robin Gett. Yeah. G-E-C-H-T, in case you can't pick up my voice here. Gett. At the time of the killings, 28 years old, the oldest of the four, married and father of three. Yeah. Fucking animal. Apparently, a psychologist or something, some uh, had said in the before they caught him, is that uh, he said that um, there's a good chance that this guy who is very defies profiles up to that point, he he said something about him gonna have he's gonna have a family or something, that you might he might come from having a family something like that. Oh, they're trying to profile this. Yeah, I think oh. so. I said something. I don't know where I well, read they, it. They got it right. Yeah, I read it somewhere in one of my research things. How the hell did these guys find each other before the internet? Yeah, right? <laughs> well, well, we'll kick it into that. Um, so there was 28-year-old married father of three, the ringleader, Robin Gett. Mm -hmm. He's a real fucking piece of shit. He's a piece of shit. There was 21-year-old Eddie Spritzer. Mm -hmm. uh, 21-year-old Thomas Cocorealis. And his 17-year-old brother, Andy Cocorealis. Yep. So these are kids. 17 years old committing these acts of atrocity. Yeah, even the, even the even the twenty one year old is still pretty young. It's a child, man. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so on May twenty third, nineteen eighty one, the first known Ripper victim was discovered. Which really says they took him probably way before that, because some of these cases they don't find bodies until like a year later. Yeah, well, this first victim they say had been dead for about four days. Yeah, but. Let me explain. Mm -hmm. um, so on May 23rd, 1981, the first Ripper crew victim was found. Employees at the Rip Van Winkle Motel in Villa Park, Illinois, not mm -hmm. far from where we are now, which today is the Brer Rabbit Motel. I pass by that all the time on the way to the greenhouse. It used to be the Rip Van Winkle Motel. Now, employees at that hotel noticed a strong smell coming from a vacant field. I mean, right next to the hotel. Hmm. Um, I don't know what it is now, if it's still a vacant field or not. Do you know, Dave? developed now. It is. Oh, I wonder if it's haunted. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, at first, the employees thought it was a dead animal. That's the first thing people think, right? Right, yeah. Maybe a deer or a, a large possum, something right. like that. 
Or a hobo. Um, but it wasn't. Of course, it never is, right? And the authorities were called. What the authorities found was a badly decomposing body of a 28-year-old African-American woman named Linda Sutton, who was abducted while she was walking in broad daylight right by Wrigley Field down on Addison. Addison and Clark. That's where I lived, 1060 West Addison. It's my address. <laughs> the Friendly Confines? Yeah. Oh, nice. Right. Um, a Blue, huge Blue's tourist Brothers, destination. Blues Brothers reference? Anyone? Oh, no, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't catch it. Sure. That's Which is they... a huge tourist destination, right? Wrigley Field. Yeah. Right on Addison and Clark. Busy. Broad daylight. Boom. Grabbed her. She was found wearing a sweater, but no pants. Her underwear were pulled down around her thighs. She was wearing white stockings and had $17 in cash stuffed in one of the socks, um, which makes authorities believe she was a, a prostitute because that was a, a known ploy that prostitutes used. They would hide their money in their socks. Yeah. What did she do for $17? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Probably nothing good. I'll flick it once. <laughs> I might spit on it. Uh, she was stabbed multiple times in the torso. Yeah. And her left. Uh, left breast was removed, taken. And she was a mother of two. Mm -hmm. She had two kids. Now, it's interesting with the removal of the breasts, because this is, like Oscar oh, said, breasts. this common theme through all of the victims, one or both breasts removed. Um, the forensic psychologists have three reasons for the removal of a sexualized body part, like a breast. One is paraphilia. People who suffer from paraphilia, a, a deviant sexual practice where killers harvest a body part for arousal or for use in some fucked up sexual activity. Yeah, there's paraphilia. The, there's always the official psychological description of fucked yeah. up thing. Yes. <laughs> there's always three reasons, right? Um, why usually three reasons why people would keep a killer will keep a body part, a uh, trophy, what you said, and the other was like to make to feel empowered. By taking them away, you know, like... A, yeah, it's symbolic. Right. It's, symbolic. it's removing a body part that symbolizes power, a breast, genitals. Right, yeah, exactly. Something that elicits this raw emotion in people. So that is actually, yeah, a number two reason people harvest these type of body parts. It's symbolic. Removing a body part that holds symbolic, powerful significance, like female reproductive organs, like yeah. breasts, um, empower the killer. Um, it's defeminizing, specifically removal. I mean, yeah, of the we can always jump to I mean, defeminization of can, the woman. It's funny because we never, we don't know the actual reasons to everything, but that's a good theory too. Yeah, know, sure. and the third one um, is simply to keep a macabre memento right. of that act. I think that's the least one. Something they could reflect. I think that's back the on. least likeliest one of the three of the of the possibilities. It's Just because of what they did with them. It's got to be hard to preserve a breast because it's all fatty tissue. Yeah. <laughs> well, our friends found ways. Yeah, they did some will, stuff with them. We yeah. will find out. We will. Yeah. Oscar, did I forget anything about Miss Sutton? No, I don't. I didn't memorize everything. I just know the generals. Oh, so, <clears throat> she was badly decomposed. Badly decomposed. She could only be um, uh, uh, identified by teeth. Mm -hmm. That was it. But yet, she was only killed four days prior. Um, so what? I didn't know that detail. What the forensic experts say happened is she was so badly mutilated. There were so many holes and gashes in her body. Oh, like an accelerated decomposition. That accelerated decomposition and the growth of maggots. Wow, okay. That broke down the body at sense. such a rapid rate. That makes wow. sense. That's how badly she was torn up. Right here in Villa Park. Well, yeah. I always see those uh, diamond... Uh, I'm going to have commercials. to stop next time I uh, pass by that area. And yeah, see, see if, I if I you can... get any vibes. Yeah. On May 15th, 1982, another woman, 21-year-old Lori Borowski, was abducted right out in front of the place where she worked, a REMAX real estate agency on Route 83 and St. Charles Road in Elmhurst. That's not far from where I go all the time either. Yep. Uh, her boss found keys to the building and other um, of Lori's personal artifacts laying right there in front of uh, of the Remax building. She was going there in the morning to open up, to open the place. So again, another daylight abduction. Right. 
And in a van, too. That's where the, the, around the time they start figuring out that's a van? Later on. Right. Oh, I thought it was like after two or three, though. They would get a little bit later. Okay. Yeah. Mm. All right. Um, now, uh, Detective Commander John Milner, a certified investigative hypnotist. This is pretty interesting. Yeah, this is un- yeah, I like um, this one, too. He used to put witnesses under to help them remember details of crimes and of witnessing events. So he decided to put some people who witnessed this abduction right the people hypnosis. around there, and yes. that's how he's able to figure out some little details that were that turned out to be right, but it wasn't like um, it, like it wasn't the it wasn't the thing that got him caught or anything. No, but one thing the witnesses did hit on was a red or orange van, right? That was near. Uh, Lori Browski's place of employment, this Remax, during the time of that abduction. So even though lots of tips came in, both voluntary and other hip- under hypnosis, just like Linda Sutton, Lori's trail went cold. Yeah. Sutton was eventually found five months later, on October 10, 1982, in the Clarendon Hills Cemetery over in Darien, Illinois, a location that was actually searched prior to her body being found. They missed it. They left her in a shallow grave in the cemetery. Which is weird how they missed that, right? Yeah. I guess they just did a sloppy job. They weren't, it wasn't very well hidden. Yeah, I know. They just overlooked it. It was already searched. And at one point, Lori Browski's own mother, who joined the, the search, was standing 10 feet away from her daughter's Was she the one with the blanket? Uh, no, I didn't get a blanket. Uh, one of the the victim's mothers had a blanket ready to go oh, because yes. she thought she was. Uh, Tell it good. She knew that uh, that their daughter most most likely not exactly dead, but she wouldn't find her in the best of sense. So she wanted to preserve her dignity Rapper, the second they found her body with a blanket. or or herself. That was Lori yeah. Borowski. Yeah, that mother. was her mom. Yeah. So she would join these search parties, and she would carry around a blanket to envelop her daughter once she was found. Very, right. I mean, just oh. horrendous shit. Very fucked up. And again, at one point in that cemetery, her mother was ten feet. From her daughter's deceased body. Oh, she uh, so she was buried in the cemetery. Yeah, they buried her in a, a shallow grave in the cemetery. She was stabbed to death um, and breast removed oh. by an ice pick. She was stabbed. Weird. That was the my weapon of choice for our discussion earlier. For the pizza driver, yeah. for the delivery guy, folks, listen to the outtakes of this episode. I mean, I'm not going to put everything uh, to, to hear how we he were talking plot about to kill the uh, pizza driver. <laughs> simply having a wonderful Christmas time flies. Me oh, I'm going to put that in there. Rage. I'm going to put that part in there. So I guess, yeah, you're right. I am putting it in there. Now we're progressing. Days after Borowski, Lori Borowski went missing. So we're looking at May 29th, 1982. Just days later, a 20 year old woman named Shui Mak, yeah. Orient Asian, yep. uh, went missing. She was a factory worker from Hanover Park. Yeah. The Ripper crew saw Mac walking and convinced her to get into their van. I don't know what it was about people in the 60s, 70s. They hitchhiked, and they got into people's cars, and it was no big thing. This was in the 80s, though. In the 80s. Well, I think the 80s, too. There's still... You hitchhiked, right? I, I didn't, personally. I mean, I wouldn't. I, know, I was like nine years old. I don't know. It just seems like people were more willing to get into strangers' cars back then. I mean, it could be something a lot more simple. Like to, so the Ripper yeah. crew convinced her, Mac, to get into this van... I'm going to put pictures of these guys up on the websites. Okay. They're not clean-cut, good-looking, uh, productive members of society mm-hmm. at first. There's, there's no way you could say, yes, this is a good person. Okay. Any, any of the four. Would you agree? I mean, you no, didn't I never, search this. Nope, I didn't look at their stuff. You never looked at their pictures? Nope. Every single, all four of them look like they're one Black Sabbath song away from a mass murder <laughs> or a satanic ritual. Yeah. They look fucking nuts. Yeah, but did they look that way in 1982? Yes. Okay. They look, they're crazy looking. So somehow they're convincing women to get into the van. And not all of them are prostitutes or are known to get into strangers' Well, cars. how do you know that, that she walked willingly in there and stuff? Like, how do you know they weren't asking for directions? So the stories just, say, right. the research says that they convinced her to get into the van. See, I, I, what because, they lured her with, I don't know. No, I think you just like, hey, can I ask you, like, where is this place? And they start talking. And, and then just grab her. Uh, no, out comes the pills. You know, there's the whole pill thing and they drugged every one of them. Right. Yeah. That's what they find out later from one of the surviving victims. One of them. That, yeah. Uh, one of them. We that know pills was, pill, is a big yeah. part of you know how you get them complacent enough to be able to not fight back so hard 
So when they're getting tortured alive, yeah, you know, and all that shit, it's they're more complacent, they're more, complacent. more pileable, I mean, more I'm pliable. Looking at, I'm looking at so the Dave's looking at the right pictures now. right now. I mean, none of them. I mean, yeah, they kind of look skeezy, but you know, it's just because they have '80s hair. You know, they look- '80s hair and porn stashes and that was a pale, lot sickly then. complexions, and yeah. that was kind of just how they probably wore weird point. dark sunglasses. If we were doing this podcast guessing, in 1987, I don't know which guy this is the second guy here, but I'm guessing that's, that's the ringleader. That's, that's probably the guy that Robin you know, Get. Yeah, because he looks. I mean, he do, he looks crazy, but he looks like a like a good looking guy. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't a bad looking guy, but he looks fucking nuts. But he looks like the type of guy that would be, you know. That's one that was married, three kids. Um, so anyway, they they got her into the van, and the Ripper crew took Mac to a a, a vacant field, a kind of an isolated field in Barrington, Illinois, which is very highfalutin. Lots of money in Barrington, yeah. where they took turns raping her. Before they stabbed her to death with a kitchen knife. Yeah, apparently the way they would do it is that they would, uh, one would rape and then they would stab and they switch off so they can always have like amounts of entertaining themselves, so to speak. Right. Yeah. yeah. Sick, sick shit. Mm-hmm. Now, Shui Mack was found four months later in a shallow grave. Both of her breasts had been removed. Okay, that's the one with two of them. Okay. Two weeks after, this, this list goes on and on. I'm not going to name all. Uh, 20, just some of the, the more, I hate to say, memorable ones. Mm-hmm. But now two weeks after Shui Mack disappeared, June 13th, 1982, a prostitute named Angel York, I love that name, she mm. just sounds hot. Yeah, it doesn't look hot, yeah. Uh, was picked up by the men in, in the van, mutilated while still alive. Mm-hmm. She was forced to severely damage her own breast with a, a large butcher knife. And then thrown out of the van. Mm-hmm. She survived. Believe it or not, she actually survived, but couldn't clearly identify the attackers. She couldn't clearly give right. a, she good, gave a good just enough a description. Vague, vague enough references. But they got some interesting clues. One, that it was more than one person. They got the drug angle. They got the van confirm, confirmation. So they yes. got in, in good clues, but she was just too drugged up to really know what, the details. And under too much distress. Too, yeah, it's insane. It's um, insane, yeah. No. This work gets really fucked up. Um, what people most what most people don't know about this particular one mm-hmm. with Angel York uh, is that after the Rippers forced York to nearly amputate her own breast, mm-hmm. one of these animals went into a sexual frenzy. Yeah, um, as she was doing it, cut her up more. Yeah, and then <laughs> he masturbated. He masturbated into one of the wounds. Yep, and then sealed the wound shut. With, with like duct, tape, duct tape, yeah, and then threw her ass out of the van. Yeah, Th- cut assuming, her up. Assuming that she died from that fall and all the wounds, but she never did. I mean, what the fuck, man? Which, by the way, you know, it seems to be like the more greedy they are about the senseless violence, senseless to us, obviously, is that uh, the more that weakness is their downfall because um, they just like throw out these victims. They, you know, if they don't want to get caught, if they were, you know, more headstrong, they wouldn't allow them to be alive when they throw people off. Right. Hands, things like that. So in a, in a way, it's good because it leads to the downfall, but it's also worse because it makes them into fucking crazy or versions of themselves already. Yes. And so. it does get worse. Yeah, I know it gets worse. It gets worse. If that's not fucked up enough, cutting a woman, mutilating her and then jerking off into the wounds and then sealing the wound shut with duct tape. What the fuck is going through your mind? What goes through a person's mind, Dave, when they do something like that? I mean, the shit they're already doing is pretty fucking crazy, so they're probably just thinking of ways to be even fucking crazier. No, I mean, it's almost like they're discovering a um, a psychosexual, in every sense of those words, kink that just evolves, and they're realizing, like, oh, my gosh, she's doing it to herself, and it gets me hotter, and bam, they do something. Yeah, they said he was like a mad dog frenzy this yeah, guy exactly. went into, seeing it her was, mutilate her own breast. They, we don't know who that is, right? Couldn't get the info on which guy exactly. I mean, we'll never know for sure because of the one, one post-court uh, fact that we'll talk about about these guys. Yeah. Uh, but we'll get into that. Now, moving on, mm-hmm. August 28th, 1982, an 18-year-old prostitute named Sandra Delaware was abducted, oh, yeah. strangled, yeah. stabbed, yeah. Um, breast removed. The Ripper crew put chains around Delaware's neck and, and legs and attached two bowling balls to the chains, yep. threw her body in the Chicago River. A few months later, she washed up on the shores of the Chicago River and her body was discovered by yeah. police. 
<clears throat> How many murders were ha- had happened before between them? Because it seems like there's a gap there, right? There was, yeah. They took a time off. They took a okay. little bit of time off in okay. between there. Um, I don't know. One, two, three, four, at least five. Yeah. Okay. And so they move on. A month after Sandra Delaware, one by the name of Rose Davis was abducted right in downtown Chicago, killed and dumped in an alley off of North Lakeshore Drive. Again, popular tourist destination, constantly busy, lots of money uh, in that part of town. Now, Davis had almost the exact same injuries as Sandra Delaware, mm-hmm. a victim from a month prior. Yeah. Um, raped, battered, strangled, breast removed. But no anchor this time, No anchor bowling balls. No anchor bowling balls, right. no. Except this time, investigators found a four-inch piece of wood, which actually turned out to be part of a hatchet handle, mm-hmm. inserted deep into Davis's vagina. Mm-hmm. This is fucking gross. She had been raped so badly, so um, viciously yeah. with this uh, hatchet handle um, that her, they, they perforated her vagina and that piece actually entered her abdominal cavity. Wow. Yep. I, I mean, rabid animals don't do this to each other. Here was an interesting one. Um, it actually turned out Investigators now say, many years later, that it wasn't a Ripper Crew murder. But on September 11th, 1982, a woman named Carol Pappas, wife of Chicago Cub pitcher yeah, yeah. Milt Pappas. That's not one of the victims? One? No, investigators what? say there, were nothing, there was no evidence on the body um, that match any of the Ripper Crew murders. So it was like a copycat? So she was, she was abducted. She was, they thought she right. was abducted by the Ripper crew. Body right. disappeared, lost forever. Five years later... They find a body? Pappas, yeah, Carol Pappas's body finds, uh, gets found in her vehicle in a submerged in a re- retention pond in Wheaton, Illinois. Wow. Oh, shit. No signs of distress on the body. She crashed. That happens a lot. In There's, retention ponds? That happens a lot, where people just... Drive like people disappear and their their car just drove off into a river or a lake That's or whatever. So they crazy. Drive. Find the car ten, twenty, thirty years later. But when I think retention pond, I think three feet of water, right? There's That's a, what I well, think. there's an infa- but clearly there is more. There's a fairly infamous one that you'll see it pop up on your Facebook feed all the time. Of, uh, I'm not sure where it happened, but a car drove into you know uh, one of those retention ponds, and you can actually see the roof of the car from the Google Maps. Are you serious? And the woman had disappeared like four or five years earlier. Well, that's what happened with Carol Pappas. Pappas. Gotcha. They, they thought she was a Ripper crew. I think even one of the Ripper crew members claimed responsibility for it, but there were no visible marks on the body that would have said yeah, this and, belonged to the Ripper crew. And based on their history, they're not going to let this one go or anything. Like right. That. Unless, to throw off investigators, they stepped, because she was a high-profile person, wife of a Chicago Cubs pitcher. Yeah, but a how... A lot of money. And to yeah. step out of their character yeah. and kill her in another way that wasn't so obvious as to be a ripper murder. And far be it for me, I'm not an FBI profiler, but it seems like I don't think uh, I don't think it was them because I don't even think that that I'm not saying Robin Gett isn't smart to do that. I'm saying that they they seem to be so like they drive around, they see someone they want, they just go get them. It's very impulsive. Right. So that's what's interesting um, and we'll talk about it later classifying these guys. It's kind of hard. It was very hard for investigators. It still is. Um, the randomness, uh, the geographical location being so tight, the spontaneity, yeah. the brutality, the fact that there's four at least uh, people committing these crimes. Yeah. Um, day, night, there was no planning. Serial killers plan. They'll plan for years before they act. Not all of them, but some do. Some are I just impulsive. Shit. FBI profilers. Seems like these guys would just plan. Like decide that they're they just go drive around and look for a victim. The opportunity. Mm-hmm. So it was very hard to claim. There's actually a classification I feel they fall under, and we'll talk about that towards okay. the end. Okay. Okay. Cool. I also have a thing about their methods. Do you uh-huh. want to talk about it now or later? No, it's no later. Later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I want to hear your input too. You did a lot of research too. Now, of course, there were more victims. I can't go into all of them because of time, but the final known victim was December 6, 1982. Just over a month after killing Rose Davis, a final known victim, a prostitute named Beverly Washington, was found on some train tracks in Chicago. She's the golden goose of catching these guys. 
She's the reason that these guys are in jail today. Um, I think one of them has been executed by lethal injection by now. They have, um, yes. Not all. I of them was are. just reading that one of them was due to be released this past September, right? Like 2017. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. We'll talk about that. It didn't too. happen, but we'll get into that. Uh, but Beverly Washington, bless her soul, she remembered details like nobody's business, and so much so that only what a month or a few weeks later, they found them exactly how she specified the van was, even the. The thing on the visor. The roach clip hanging the roach from clip the rearview hanging, mirror right, with, thing, the, with yeah. the colored feathers. Yeah, very specific stuff. And uh, the drugs, the descriptions of what they were wearing, uh, <laughs> all spot on that um, got them caught. Got Well, the spritzer guy caught because he was driving the van when they caught him. Right. And then from there on, it you know rolled over to the rest. Yes, yeah. and we're going to get into all of it. Bless Because thankfully... They left her for dead on train tracks. The four guys that we know yeah. consist of the Ripper, made up the Ripper crew, are all either dead or in jail. So, yeah, like you said, miraculously, this one lived. She shouldn't have, though, based on the treatment. Yeah, she was handcuffed. Right. She was fed massive amounts of pills right. to and, keep her complacent. And obviously, this is the one one victim that we got the most details from because she remembered so much. She's able to actually discern their ritual on on their victims, which is you know how they took turns on people, what they did first, in what order, how they were moving the breasts, right, with, with a piano, of wire. piano wire, piano wire. Could you imagine using a a piano wire? Well, as a I girl? saw Hannibal season two, so yes, I do. Know. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they amputated her breasts with a length of piano wire. While she was semi-conscious. Right. While That's she was a, semi-conscious. That was a big deal for them. They wanted these people conscious. I can't even remove a skin tag I have on my body. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nail clipper. So. Now, as you said, Oscar, Washington was able to give a detailed description to police. Yeah. Including the van. Odd items in its interior, like that roach clip. Yeah. With the feathers. The fact that there was a, a wood divider between the cab right. yeah, and she the knew cargo that, area. She knew that too, yeah. Um, and like I said, the road trip. Now, a few weeks later, once Washington gave all these descriptions, just like you said, Eddie Spritzer, mm -hmm. one of the Ripper crew members, was spotted by police driving the proper colored van. Yeah. Now, when officers... Imagine that officer's hard on for oh, man. catching that guy. Now, when officers pulled him over and eventually placed him under arrest, Spritzer played really cool. Yeah. He wasn't worried. Say, hey, man, this van isn't mine. Belong and it wasn't. It belonged boss. to Robin Gecht. Yeah. Robin Gecht. Right. Right. Now, Gecht, a local carpenter, and remember that detail because this is a shocking uh, yeah. connection here with yeah. carpentry. It's going to blow your mind. Once Spritzer gave his name, he was soon apprehended and identified. Gecht was identified by Washington, the hospitalized prostitute, yeah. while she was in critical condition in the hospital recovering. Police brought Gecht and a number of other individuals for a lineup at her hospital bed. Yep. Could you imagine? No. I mean, that's, I've never heard of that before. Yeah. Have you ever heard of that, Dave? I have not. So, due to Washington's t testimony, I guess, uh, hospital bed testimony. <clears throat> yes. Gek was she, arrested. She nailed them all from photo. It's easy. Yeah, he was booked Thank on God charges of multiple aggravated battery and deviant sexual assault. But, gotta love the justice system, because Gek was able to post bail, post bond, he was released a short time later, and yep. then he split. He disappears. Yep. Police put out an arrest warrant, Yep. and in the meantime... They start to lean on Spritzer because now they're putting two and two together that Spritzer and Get are working together. Yeah. What Do judge I, can, in their right can mind we, um, would be, give somebody like that bail? Well, well can we uh, can we Happens before we continue any further on? I want to talk about the the willpower involved in some of these women because they're not all the same. Most of them are the same just because you know obviously they're all bamboozled. All of them are victims. None of, nothing that happened to them was their fault in any way. Um, obviously, I'm not saying that. There was that one woman, I forget their name, the one that was a lawyer, or no, no, she was a, she worked in advertising in the Gold Coast. And um, I don't forget her name, but I, the reason I found her the most interesting victim, other than the last one, because the last one got him caught, um, is because uh, she was such a fighter in her own way, like a, you know, like a, you know, a fighter, uh, more than usual, I guess, and created so much problems for them, I guess, in the, in the acts, not enough to get her saved. But it, hers was like the – she was the victim that got the most punishment out of all of them. And I forget what the details were. I can't even imagine. I read yeah. them and uh, 
uh, there was a link to watch some of the see, see the mortuary, not the mortuary, the death photos or whatever. I did not see them. I don't not see them either. No, I didn't see them, and I didn't care to at the time. Don't care to now. Um, but I remember the way they were, the way the, the information was being put out about this woman is that she was such a fighter that she created them to go really crazy on her, Guys, more than is, usual. This is a really good wow. Christmas story, by the way. I know. I think so. I think so too. <laughs> but at this point, I want to pause a little bit. I want to. I want to go back. And get to know this Robin Geck a little bit better. Because he was the ringleader. Yeah. The other three members that we know of, of the Ricker, Ripper crew, claimed that Geck had supernatural powers. Yeah. That he had demonic powers. That he had power and sway over people. And he could convince people against their will well, the last two to things do are right. things. Those last two things are right. But he doesn't have powers. No, he, he's a fucking jagoff. He doesn't have powers. He was talking and dealing with simpletons, basically. He had the gift of gab. He had the gift of gab, and he had the gift of having cohorts that had below average IQs and yeah, were kids. That's a big deal. Right? Yeah. They were kids. So, as I mentioned in the beginning, at the time of the Ripper Crew murders, Get was 28 years old, married, and had three kids. Not much is known about Get. Prior to this Ripper infamy, um, frankly, I didn't give a shit about any of these ki- these guys' upbringings. Obviously, they didn't have good upbringings. They were probably beaten, or they were molested, or they were raped, or their parents were alcoholics or drug. Right. I don't give a shit what they were. Not that we know that information. They produced animals, and yeah. animals they are. Yeah. But what we do know about Gek is that he was uh, known to rape his own sister right. when they were younger. Right. So that gives you an idea kind of what we're dealing with here. And he was a local carpenter in the yes. area and an electrical contractor employed by none other than, drum roll please, Dave, could you give us a drum roll? It's John Wayne Gacy. PDM contractors. He was employed by PDM contractors. Do you guys know PDM contractors? Yeah, J- John Wayne Gacy. John Wayne Gacy, that's right. Jonathan Wayner Gacy. PDM Contractors was owned by none other than killer clown John Wayne Gacy. Pogo the Clown. My cat's name is Pogo. You know, the guy that killed 33 young men between 72 and 78 and buried most of them in his basement on the northwest side of Chicago, yeah. right over here on Sunnydale Avenue? I've never heard of him. Hmm. Was Gacy a part of the Ripper crew? Some people claim that Gacy was a member of the Ripper crew. But well, Gacy the, didn't like women. Doesn't matter. The other way around is more likely, right? Like he is. So let's know. let's explore that angle because if you when think was about Gacy it, Gacy caught seventy eight, nineteen seventy eight, and we're going to cover so Gacy I completely on another episode. These guys. So exactly, what are the chances? Because these guys didn't. The Ripper crew didn't start till eighty one, right? Right. So, what are the chances that two people? who know each other personally, happen to be two of the most heinous serial killers, I'm not going to say serial killer for Ripper Crew, two of the most heinous killers in the area and not know it about one another. That, it is you know, impossible. I, that's not impossible. And the, it and is the, impossible. If, and not if, know anything about each other? But if you're, if you're on any kind of social media right now... I'm you, not talking about... I'm talking about back in, is, in 1980s I'm just saying, and late 70s. If you're on social media now and you have over 1,000 or 2,000 friends, inevitably... On your friends list, there's going to be at least one person that you know that has a connection to somebody else you know. Doesn't you matter. never knew either of them together at the same time. You didn't work at the same place, whatever. It's not the same thing. But wait, what just happened to know each other? Because wait, what is the fascinating fact here that you're asking about? Like that they knew each other, or that they didn't know each other? That they knew each other. Like for Casey instance, was his boss. Like what's the odds of that? And they were both. Heinous fucking killers. You're saying what are the odds? What are the odds? odds that they would not have known that about each other? No, I'm saying no. I mean, I mean, I think it makes it more obvious that uh, you know, based on Gacy's mm, life, life before his arrest or death or whatever, is that uh, of co- it makes sense that he would probably cultivate that if he sees that in someone else. Absolutely. But it, but, but it doesn't make it. Doesn't make it like what are the odds? If you think now to me, it's what are the odds? What are the odds that these two people are going to hook up? No, I, what serendipity I think, I think, you know, brought two heinous killers together? I My think, whole point is one was involved with the other. Gacy always said that he wasn't alone. 
Right. Yeah, okay. And Robin Gett, damn well you know he showed symptoms and signs of being a fucking psychotic. Right. Yeah, before but at 1981, same, at the same while time, Gacy was hunting. But Gett might have just been inspired by Gacy. He saw what Gacy did, and he's like, "Oh, I want to do what Gacy did." You know, I know, I know the guy, and I looked up to him, and you know, I mean, that's probably a more likely scenario than. So you don't think Gacy? I don't think Gacy cultivated like, this person. I don't think Gacy showed him the ways of. Honestly, I don't think Gacy ever revealed his sadism to anyone until he was caught. I don't think he like shared that with anyone, especially because his he was he was into boys. Yeah. And yeah. No, that even for a serial killer at the time, you know, admitting you're into, you know, other dudes. <laughs> that was like, whoa. Even in serial killer Whoa, circles, that's too much. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. I just think. They would have been like, gross, dude. I heard about the Ripper crew many years ago. I had no idea there was a connection to John Wayne Gacy. Mm -hmm. um, when I read that, it blew my mind. And then I started researching that topic deeper. But there's a lot of connections. I mean, John Wayne Gacy was one of those guys that. Everyone in the neighborhood knew him. Oh, I mean, Everyone John Wayne Gacy was friends with Rosalind Carter, yeah. Jimmy Carter's wife. I mean, he was a member of the JCs. I mean, he was an upstanding citizen. This isn't a Gacy episode. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to bring that connection out and get your guys' take. I think Gacy helped cultivate these guys. I That's would what say I think. it's more of an inspiration. Than and Ga cultivate. Gacy always said. I that. think it's probably somewhere between what you two are saying. Well, because like. think of it this way: it was Gacy was caught in '78. When did get work for him? That I would, I'm not sure. Jet was probably that I'd have to look up. 18, 19, 20 Sorry. years old when he worked f for him, which would make the other the other guys in the crew seven or eight or nine years old when it happened. When Gacy was caught, right? So, so you're saying Gacy? They they're emulating Gacy. I'm saying that they're emulating Gacy. Yes. Okay. Because right. if you think about it, so I'm I'm assuming Get didn't work for him. Right in 1978, when he was caught, it was probably before some that. some years prior. So it was between say 75 and 77, That's which would have put Get at age, you know, 20. -ish, which was Gacy's. 22. That was his prime pickings. Right. That age group. So, which would make the other members of his crew that were six or seven years younger than him at that time, you know, 12, 13. He probably didn't even know them. Mm. So, I don't think. I think it's a, just a coincidence. I'm sure that plenty of serial killers, I mean, like, I'm sure, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer and Andrew Kanan and, and all these other people that killed people probably have some tangential co connection to some other criminal somewhere, you know. I, I don't know. No, I, I think don't. It's I an think interesting it's path. It's the whole six degrees of separation. No, thing, I do know? think it's interesting, and I'm not willing to just, uh, I'm not saying it's that, that they have no connection like that at all. I do think there is something there. I'm not saying anything big. I'm not saying he, like, you're going to be my disciple. Nothing like that. I'm saying that these, these two, like, it's like the way you can tell another murderer in, is in the room um, if you've done well, it yourself. You know, what's look like, in their eye. you know what's a more, reason what's a more reasonable be, thing is they were, both, they were both general contractors that worked in the same area. No, so. get specifically, he worked for Gacy. Well, yeah, but... I don't think that there's. I mean, I don't. I don't I'm not think trying to romanticize any history of of killers, man. I'm just saying that, you know. And there's that thing that Robin said in prison after the fact that you know, if uh, Gacy had it wrong by burying everyone. I guarantee in his this backyard. is. I guarantee the way that they started yeah. was Robin Gett was like, "Oh, Gacy got caught. I bet I could do it without getting caught." Wound up in some conversation with the other members of his crew. Um, and it was like, oh, you knew Gacy, so tell us about Gacy. Oh, that's pretty mm. crazy, the things that he did, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And that's that's probably the jumping off point for them. We should go and do that. I think the more you rational know? you're being, the more it's just as most likely as what so, we're saying. So I will, I will <laughs> say that they were probably inspired by Gacy, but I don't think Gacy willingly Fair had enough. anything to do with it. And I liked Oscar's point, too, what Get said in prison, how Gacy screwed up by... Uh, well, burying them all in his backyard or his basement or whatever, you yeah. know, so close to home. The whole idea is to throw them off the right. scent and put it out there in the middle of nowhere or bury one in the river, one in the cemetery, one by the alley right. at probably fucking, what's that bar we like? Wait, uh, which one? Yeah, the bar, the biker bar we like. Oh, exit. Yeah, because back then it was like a mecca for a lot of North hookers. Avenue. Yeah, yeah, prostitutes. I don't know. I just thought and, it was incredibly and interesting. Cops. And Gacy was always said the. Um, that he wasn't alone. There were 
disciples. Right. And in, in many ways, Gek took that, you know, a little farther. Like, instead of saying it to the media after the fact, he had real followers doing a lot of the work for him or with him. Yeah. Um, Regardless, interesting connection. You know, also, every time these killers start, remember, when they start killing, they're in their, like, 10th year of fucking, like, going crazy. They're not, like, no one snaps and decides to be one and they start the next day. Like you kind of said, some of the planning involved. This guy had to recruit these kids probably for him, like, maybe at least three years. No way. It was yeah, a month before. Yeah, and condition them to make them think he had powers. Right. Right. Yeah, and good they're point. stupid and they're young and uh, they're probably frustrated from their own shitty whatevers. And uh, you can exploit that. Yeah. And he probably spent a few years doing that. That's a great point. Now, Get did have a strong interest in Satanism. And secret rituals. Well, did he really, or did he, was that for show? No, he was. Neighbors saw uh, books about Satanism at his house. Um, yeah. At the Rip Van Winkle Motel. He would quote things too. Where yeah, these guys he, stayed. Yeah, before uh, he ate stuff. And the hotel owner uh, told police officers later on that it seemed like Get and his friends belonged in a cult, like they they were cult members. Yeah. So he was really interested in the Satanism and rituals and gave off the Satanistic vibe, which was ripe for the pickings in the early 80s with the Satanic Panic, when right. Satanism was just spreading across the country and your kids were going to be abducted and killed by Satanists. I think he's using it as a fear thing. And I don't think he was... Whatever he did, it worked. Yeah. I heard that they used to hang out at Triangle Woods. Oh, here we go. <laughs> um... So he did have a strong interest in Satanism and secret rituals, and he devoured books about the torture practices of ancient cultures. That, yeah, that I believe. Yeah. And there was a notable one. This one's really interesting. There was a notable culture. It was an ancient people that would cut off women's breasts and use them as tobacco pouches. That's right. Yeah. And what do these guys do? Right? Well, all, all but, you know, the, the Well, pouches. the tobacco. Yeah. Right. But they amputating breasts. Yeah, exactly. They probably got the technique idea from there or something. Yeah, and like I said... That's other... fucked up. That's the real part that, like, okay, that's what he was actually interested in. The rest is just, like, fan fodder to make these guys more compliant to his needs if he yeah. makes them think that he's satanically like, powerful. Absolutely. And not to mention the scare of every the news outlets and stuff. I think... I don't think he was satanic at all. Hmm. Now, the other members of the Ripper crew were terrified, as we mentioned. They believed he had powers like a warlock or some shit like that. Yeah, it's amazing what they said. And also, uh, there's that whole thing, the interview thing, when they brought in, finally, Robin Gecht into the same, not room, but in the same uh, looking distance between Robin and... Uh, yeah, this is interesting. Uh, what's his name? Um, the other guy, the first guy that was caught? Spritzer. Spritzer. Um, he, by then, Spritzer had been confessing and everything, saying all this shit. And then as soon as Robin, he sees Robin in the, in the same, in the room adjacent to him, he immediately turns, turns back and says, none of it happened. He's not involved at all. Robin didn't do anything. Takes back all of his confessions. All Robin Just had by to do one look. was look at him. Just look at him once. Yeah. That's crazy. And I guess one final sick and people little... People are dumb. <laughs> people are dumb, impressionable. One final slick little sick nugget of information about Robin Geck. After everything came out, after he was caught, one of Geck's girlfriends stepped forward and told police that Robin always tried to get her to cut off one of her own nipples. Right. And he said that if she wouldn't do it, he had guys that would. Right. Yeah, someone will do it for her. Now, but what, I, why, why, why would that person still be your boyfriend after that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe there were slim pickings in her I mean, know, uh, geni yeah. genetic pool. Good maybe Lord, it's either man. that or a meth head. And like, ah, well, I've been with meth heads already. Oscar, what if Lexi said to you, if you really love me, you will, you will amputate the tip of your penis? This girl here? That one right there. Um, As we're podcasting, you're looking at. Snapchat? It's great. Snapchat, dude. Even better. Get with the kids. Um, if she asked me to do any of that, well, I would say no. And I Stay mean, with her, though, obviously. Yeah, of course. Well, there's your answer. People would still stay with them. I guess. But I digress. We digressed. So the cops we left off, they're leaning on Spritzer. Well, yeah. Well, gets on the lamb. Mm -hmm. And he cracks. Spritzer finally cracks, and he begins spilling all these horrendous, demonic... Details. Right. So, yes, he, Eddie Spritzer, admits he was involved in the murders. It was Eddie and Robin Gett that went around kidnapping women in the red, the red van, stabbing them. Then Gett would be the one that removed their breasts. I, I can't even say this. After the breasts, the breasts were removed, Gett would have sex with the wounds. Mm -hmm. he, would, he would have sex with the whole left 
behind from the removed uh, breast. That, that doesn't even seem feasible. Here's the paraphilia come into play. <sighs> this is so fucked up. Some of the amputated breasts <clears throat> were used in ceremonies in Get's shitty ass attic in his shitty ass home right. at 2163 North McVicker uh, in Chicago's Belmont, Cra- Belmont Cragen neighborhood. By the way, that's my neighborhood. Get and his accomplices mm-hmm. would kneel in this shitty attic around the breast, which were placed on a red cloth on top of a crate. Uh, ceremoniously, mm-hmm. they ritualized it. They would chant from Satanic Bible. They would chant different weird verses. And after this ritual was done, led by Get, all four men would masturbate into the breast. And then Get would cut it into pieces and share the breast with the other members of the Ripper crew for them to eat. Yep. I mean, that yep. sounds pretty much like... Just going to let that sink in a bit. Pretty much sounds like a standard kind of fraternity hazing ritual. Just letting that sink in. <laughs> Masturbating into breasts. That what was that address again? Tell me that address again. And then cut up yeah. and fed and consumed in some sort of sick sacrament offering. It's pretty judgmental of you, man. Now, as it turns out, as I said, also involved uh, was a man named Andy Cocorealis, just 17 years old when he started killing with the Ripper crew. He's a real psycho that claimed he killed 18 women. No yep. one knows if it's true or not. But two of which that we do know that Cocorealis, Andy, the young one, killed were Linda Sutton and Lori Borowski. Linda Sutton the first. Right. Lori Borowski, the one found in the cemetery. Mm-hmm. Then there was also the winner, uh, Thomas Coquialis, Andy's brother, who admitted to also raping, torturing, and murdering uh, Lori Browski, along with his brother and Spitzer. That was the one that was just supposed to be released, right? Uh, we'll get to that. You're jumping ahead to the end. Thomas Coquialis described how the three of the how three of them uh, kidnapped Lori Browski and dragged her to the Rip Van Winkle Motel, again the one right over there in Villa Park. They threw her on the bed, they gagged her, tied her down, beat her, raped her. Who was the one they gagged with by using a rock? I didn't read that one. That was one of the victims, yeah. Good God. Yeah. That's only because I read some details that you didn't read, and you yeah. gave me some details well, that I didn't Well, you're bringing it to the show. That's right. good. Yeah. Now, sometime during the assault to Borowski, one of the men took out a piano wire, wrapped it around her left breast while she was alive, and began to pull and twist the wire until the breast was removed. Then they again had sex with the hole where the breast had been. Mm -hmm. And after, they dumped her body in the cemetery where she was found. Later, the Rippers would claim to have killed upwards of 12 women inside the Rip Van Winkle Motel. We should go there, right? Well... It's funny because, well, not funny. This whole episode was Joe Erie's idea. And, of course, he's not here tonight. Bro. But he was passing the Rip Van Winkle, the bouts, the Brer, the Brer. I've passed that place. Say it. What's the name of the hotel? The Brer Rabbit. Thank you. I passed it. I've literally passed that place a hundred times. Well, it, Joe said when he would pass this hotel, the Brer Rabbit, there we go. Um, he would get a vibe from it. So he recently, he just Googled it. Yeah, you know. And I'm, he found all this information. Right. So his idea was to actually do this episode from the Brer Rabbit. I've, I've always, I've never, I can't say I've gotten a vibe from it, but I've always kind of like, I at it long. Whenever way. I walk, right, go past it, I'm like, that place looks, you know, shady. Yeah. Oh, it's shady. They're trying hard now to change the notorious past. They're all about banquets and weddings at the hotel right. and adjoining banquet room. I don't think but they're doing any of that. I, I read it on Yelp. I read it on their website. Bitch. Because it's, like it's like the type of hotel you take, you know. Go ahead and look it up. When you, well, you take up fairs, too. Um, it's, like a, it's like the type of place you take, like, a whore, too, or, like, a girl you're cheating on your wife with. <laughs> so, eventually, all were caught. Yeah. Yay. 
Now, prisoner N42998, Thomas Cocorealis, pled guilty to the Borowski murder and was sent to jail and was supposed to be released in September of this year. September of this year. He was going to get out, serving half of his 70-year sentence. But because he couldn't find adequate housing on the outside, his term was extended. And now Cocorealis, Thomas Cocorealis, has to be released, without a doubt, by March 29th, 2019, from the Illinois River Correctional Center. This is a picture of the motel. Like, it's just a motel. There's no way that they're doing banquets and stuff like that. Look up their website, dude. Bitch. Andy Cocorealis, Thomas's 17-year-old brother, was charged with multiple murders, including Lori Browski, and in 99, 1999, was executed, thank God, by lethal injection at the age of 35 at a maximum security prison in Tams, Illinois. Yeah, one of the last people that were executed before they took out um, the death penalty here. Death penalty, right. the politics of the death penalty has a lot to do with why these people are still alive um, and not have been killed since as far as uh, execution. So blame the system? I don't know. No, I mean, you're absolutely right. right. When it's being the last person before they repealed the death penalty. Right. Eddie Spritzer, that piece of shit, pled guilty to four murders and one attempted murder. He was sentenced to death for Linda Sutton's murder, but his sentence was later commuted to life in prison by Illinois' former governor, the lovely George Ryan. So now he's no longer on death row, and he's currently prisoner number N41165 yep. at Statesville Correctional Center in Crest Hill, Illinois, and he's ineligible for parole. Eventually, Robin Gett was caught. Yep. But How was he was... caught? I forget where they found them. I read about it. I remember reading about it. I still remember the. It was like a one liner I read. I didn't read the like details. It wasn't anything uh, romanticized. It wasn't. No, it wasn't. Big but it was something stupid. Or... No, it was something stupid though. I don't remember what it was. Did he just get? It wasn't he driving and they caught him or something like that? Just Maybe. something but, mundane. But, but like he was like he was like in his old turf when he shouldn't have been. Something like that. I don't remember. Something brought him to a mistake or I don't remember what. But for someone that's supposedly so smart at manipulating in people, he might have a really dumb mistake by not just like going to Mexico or something. Right. But smart, manipulative, this guy was never charged with murder. No, just the Beverly stuff because that's the only witness that, can saw, that saw him do the shit. That's right. If it wasn't for Beverly, this guy would be free right now. That's right because he was never charged with murder. And he denied till he died. Only attempted. He denied yeah. everything. Never – Never said, always said he was innocent. Yep. Never, still, ever, ever, ever. He still says that today. Yep. He was sentenced to 120 years. Yeah. And is serving his hopefully hellish right. time as a prisoner. Right. As number N40573 at Menard Correctional Center mm -hmm. in Menard, Illinois. Yeah. He is eligible for, for parole um, at 2042 at the age of 89. Right. And I, like I said, the only reason they gave him that kind of heavy sentence is because even despite the fact that he's only charged for one, not even a murder, but like manslaughter or whatever, is because they, you know, cause the court also knows, like, okay, you did all this shit, you're denying, but we're still going to give you 120 years for this one almost murder. Right. Because it's like the OJ thing. You know, after the fact, they arrested him and they gave him all that extra stuff right. for that one crime that he got away from. It's kind of like that. Thank God. Um, Thank God they gave him the 120. Right. Exactly. Yeah, this guy, we don't want him out there. So that was the Ripper crew. As you said, Dave, you never even heard of it. Yeah. I'm, yeah. And, and 20 is where they think it, it starts. They think there's many, many more that's just never been admitted to. Bodies never found. The connection never made. Well, I always think that, you know, they probably, some of these people start with, like, drifters, homeless people before this, you know. So. And that's the thing is a lot of serial killers, before their first known victims, there's probably several before it that they killed in different ways or – or practice. Well, that, that was the interesting thing. So that's the Ripper crew. They're caught. One's dead. Mm -hmm. One's about to get out. Uh, two ineligible for parole. Uh, well, at the age of 89. So basically ineligible. What is he going to do at 80, 89? The, at 89 years old. He's going to brush it up. The hard part was for people to put a classification on these scumbags. Mm -hmm. So mass murderers. They're not mass murderers. Uh, a mass murderer is the act of murdering a number of people in one sitting, typically simultaneously, 
or over a relatively short period of time and in close geographic like a, proximity. Like a school shooter or Andrew Cunanan. Yeah, the, uh, the FBI defines mass murder as murdering four or more persons during an event with no cooling off period. Okay, that's good. Between the murders. A mass murderer typically occurs in a single location uh, where one or more people kill several. Right. That's not these guys. No. They did have a cooling off period. Oh, yeah. Which kind of takes that out of the definition of mass murder, right? Yeah. Spree killers, people who just kind of go on this wild bender, right? According to the FBI, spree killers typically kill three or more people over a 30-day period. Um, and the killer or killer's identity is typically known during that short burst. That's not the case here. Nope. This went over a year and a half with time to cool off, and their names weren't found out till after. Okay. Correct? Yeah, that reminds me of a show, but yeah. yeah. Um, also, with spree killing, um, numerous people are killed in a single event or numerous people in multiple events in different geographic locations Yeah, with spree killing. Okay. Different counties, different cities, different states, different countries within a 30-day period. That isn't these guys. Right. So they're not spree killers. They've mentioned serial killers. According to the FBI, serial killer is a series of two or more murders committed as separate events, usually, but not always, by a single individual acting alone. Here we go. Victims typically have common traits, which these girls didn't, as far as profile. Well, yeah, they, they had two. Right? They had two common traits. But they're talking common traits here in victim appearance, race, oh, color, okay, breed, okay. sex, religion. Well, the boobs, man. They have common traits, like age, sex, race. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of thought and planning goes into the kill. Serial killers are great at planning. Right. Plotting and covering up their tracks. That's not these guys. We all said they were spur of the moment type of people. Opportunity. Right. They went out driving. They saw somebody. Let's get this one. Yeah. There was no planning. And they didn't do a great job covering up the bodies. Most of them were found. Yeah, exactly. And um, so it's not a serial killer. They're not serial killers. But that's the closest one. By definition. It's not. But that's the closest one. It's not. It's not the closest one? It's not. What's the closest one, then? There's thrill killers. It's another classification. People who just do it for kicks. There's with thrill killings. There's typically no sexual, sexual aspects to thrill killings. And the attacks aren't prolonged. Again, that's not these guys. This was all about sexualization. Well, isn't any thrill about that a little bit? No, I don't think so. Hmm. And they would torture these people for a long time. Yeah. Mutilating, beating, raping, cutting off a breast, raping with well, a hatchet. Well, I don't know how long that'll last. So though. it can't be a thrill kill. How long does that last? Uh, probably a good day. How did they no. get away with doing this in that tiny motel? Like no. Exactly. Not exactly. a day. What? Like a couple hours, man. Still, it wasn't. It, yeah. it was prolonged. It wasn't instant. Yeah. So yeah. it's not thrill. But there is lust killers. And lust killers is what I think these four fucks were. Okay. With lust killers, um, it's brutal. Uh, lust, it's technically lust serial kill. Lust serial kill. Lust serial murder is the act of deviant behaviors by the means of brutally and sadistically killing multiple victims to achieve ultimate sexual satisfaction. Lust murders are homicide in which the offender stabs, cuts, pierces, or mutilates the sexual organs mm. of the victim's body. The sexual mutil mutil mutilation of the victim may have include evisceration, which is what disembowelment, the removal of the gastrointestinal organs, picarism, which is really gross, and they did this. Sexual interest in penetrating the skin of another person sexually. Yeah. Ripper crew. Sometimes serious enough to cause death. It's a paraphilia, what we mentioned before, and sadism. 
um, the most frequently targeted areas of the body with serial lust killers are breasts, buttocks, groin. Of course, we had the breasts in this case. A lot, yeah. Another common trait is actually the removal of breasts, and specifically female victims, to defeminize them. Mm -hmm. Insertion of objects into body cavities. Yep. Check with the hatchet handle. And the consummation, the eating of blood, flesh, and even so far as necrophilia. Right, yeah. Although none of the cases I read about the Ripper crew Man, no. talked about post-mortem No, sex. they all did it during the, when they were alive. Yeah. It's like uh, the fun ended when they died, when the victim died. So lust serial killer is what I think they were. Mm -hmm. But in all the reading I did on lust serial killer, not one instance, not one time did it mention groups of people. Friend, um, a crew, right? Well, it's got to be a combination. Committing I mean, this guy had a hold over these serial people. I honestly, lust killing. Can you even say that these three? So that's the X factor. These three lower IQ, manipulatable people. That's not a word. Um, easily convinced people. These three members of this cult of this guy. Um, I don't even know if they even would like the same stuff that he did. They just did what he told them. Out of fear. Convinced them out of fear. And out of their own insecurities, I'm not saying they're not to blame. They are definitely to blame. But, uh, you know, I don't even think they had a, a say into how they were doing the things that they were doing. They were like, okay, we need to get a big, you know, breasted person for our cult leader. Yeah. And we stab him when he says to stab him. Yeah. Or we stab them along the way, and then he finishes it off, and we do the ritual because otherwise he'll kill me or whatever they believe he'll do to them. Yeah. Um, yeah like I said, not, not saying they're not at fault. But they're impressionable. They're really young. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's a fucked up case. So I think it is a lust thing, but he just combines it with something else. You yeah, know, the guy. with this X factor yeah. of having multiple people involved Do the in, bidding for in you. his serial lust killings. Right, in his own, yeah. Dave, what do you think? I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know if the class speechless. classifications matter. It's just they were bunch of fucked up assholes why do they call them the ripper crew why not call them the booby crew or no because they call them the ripper because uh you know jack the ripper and they thought it was just one man at first hence jack the ripper so the chicago ripper was the first initial name when they found out it was a bunch of them that's when they changed it to chicago ripper crew yeah that's how it's stamped but yeah dave at the end of the day i agree with you i think um i was trying too hard to classify them classification doesn't matter yeah. they were fucking asshole animals from day one and uh, it's just such a notorious case that no one ever talks about so i thought it would be a good topic for the show i agree it's pretty messed up that is for sure final thoughts i mean uh don't kill don't kill don't kill, folks. Have a Merry Christmas. Or, I mean, do kill. Just kill the right people. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's a matter of... Uh, Don't kill, folks. Yes. Have a Merry Christmas. Um, <laughs> Happy holiday. Jay, how's your throat? My throat hurts Are so goddamn bad. Are you cocks? Is that what you're doing? I hope, this up, I hope it comes out okay. Yeah, it's going to be okay. <laughs> be right. uh, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. This is a great topic. Yeah, Happy New Year. You like it? More serial killer stuff in the future, Oscar? No, I was making fun of the fact that it's in Christmas time. We're choosing to release this oh, episode. Yeah, oh, no. and you, but this and, is a fine and, and, subject. And, and you folks out there should uh, start voting on where we go for our trip in 2018. Ooh. Yeah. Contact I, I at think, ChicagoGhostPodcast.com. I think Sedona, Arizona would be pretty cool. I'm pulling for California. I don't care. Oscar's pulling for Villa Park. Villa Park. Sounds good to me. Uh, the hotel. I want to go to that, I wanna go to that hotel. I do want to go there. All right, listeners. Check us out on iTunes. Leave us a review. Happy holidays. Oscar, take us home. Oh, okay. Sure. You want to save your soul from hell arriving on our range. <laughs> Cowboy, change your ways today. <laughs> With us, you will ride. Ride next to the devil's herd. 
We gotta have a conversation. Okay, what are you fucking This diva? is our fifty sixth episode. Okay. Jesus, who's that? Learn talking to about? talk into the fucking mic. <laughs> Don't take your head away from the mic. <laughs> he does that a lot. He does talk that into the mic, please. Fifty six episodes. Did you listen to the last one? Fifty five? No. Um, no. What? By the way, I liked our last episode. I liked it too. I thought especially it was great. The, especially the beginning and, then, <laughs> and, and the outtakes I picked. Really the funny. outtakes were great. I love the outtakes. When you put in Simply Having a Wonderful Christmas Time, Can you just song ever comes up right after it. It is the worst song ever made. It's the worst song ever written. USA Today did a story about it in 2014. Can you fucking go into the mic at least? Simply having a wonderful Christmas time. Yeah, think about that. Simply it's a stupid, stupid having... sentence, isn't it? It's a stupid sentence, isn't it? No, it's no, it's not. I'm simply having a wonderful Christmas. Time. No, you're not. No one's simply having anything. No, the most stressful time of the year is simply. Could it be wonderful and simply? No. To a homeless man who got a dollar instead of a quarter, sure. What? <laughs> a dollar is to quarter instead of a quarter. That would be a good thing. Yeah, that's simple. that's simple. So, Dave, what do you think of the song Simply Having a Wonderful Christmas Time by Sir Paul McCartney? Is he a sir? <clears throat> yes. He was well, knighted. Considering the fact that you didn't know it was Paul McCartney up until like two seconds ago when me and no Oscar idea. were discussing <laughs> I had no how idea. it is the worst motherfucking song. It's the worst song ever. Not, not, not just Christmas song. <laughs> Because there's some, there's some bad songs out there. Like you know, Backdoor like, Santa. You know, like sing, sing, song, sing, 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 sing in a song. That's a, that's a horrible <laughs> song that makes you want to murder people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, but specifically, Simply Having a Wonderful Christmas Time is the absolute worst song that has what? ever it's, been made. It's what like, is so it's bad? Like, it's like writing a book understand. report from just um, uh, reading the back of it. Yeah, no effort is put in. It's I a, never put this much. There's no in substance song. in the song at all. It's it is, it's like an approximation of a song, <laughs> right? If you will, it's like the crypt notes of a song. It's <laughs> the cliff notes of a fucking song. Really? Like yes. if it was if if it was a structure, it would be like haphazardly taped together sticks of wood. <laughs> right. Um, and is then, it at least duct tape? And then on top of that, um, if it was a car, it'd be my first car. On top of that, <laughs> the wood would like be poking you like lightly in the face and into your ear, and leaving like scratch marks. Wow! Or oh, you're using like, like a shitty razor five times, like the fifth time. You know how it really gets if cold. I were yeah, to it gets put, into the skin That's how the song is. If I were to, yeah. um, okay, so this is to me simply having a wonderful Christmas time. Would be the the food equivalent of half of like a cold like Stouffer's mac and cheese like microwave <laughs> thing that was that you picked so up that you picked up out of the garbage after it's been sitting there for two days. Oh, I think we've had that at the house and, before. And then putting warm ketchup on it oh. and eating it. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is what I would describe. As simply having a wonderful Christmas time. That's pretty. So, that's what can we tell? So, the song comes up, as you prolific. can imagine. Every time it comes up, I remind myself, oh, right, we should put our own music on instead of listening to this. <laughs> Last right. year, so. I almost got through the entire Christmas season without hearing that song. Yeah. And I believe I was in a Walgreens, <laughs> and that song came on, and I physically punched something off the shelf <laughs> when I heard it. <laughs> I literally punched like. So, although Mariah I think Carey's it was like, Christmas it was song, like some, very good song. I think it was like Airwick, <laughs> like like um, Febreze oh, type, like deodorizers. Yeah, yeah, I literally just punched them, and then there was just clanking. Um, good thing you weren't in the dumbbell section. Or clanking something. things falling on on the floor. Now, There's what not is really a dumbbell section in Walmart. What is it specifically <laughs> about this song that you hate so much? Um, a particular verse. Something about the melody. Enrages me immediately <laughs> upon hearing it, and then the lyrics are just uh, okay. They're done by a child. The I, lyrics are, the are stupid. stupidest fucking. It's like it. It literally. It literally sounds like somebody burst into Paul McCartney's office and said, "We need a Christmas song right now." <laughs> 
And then he just he got out a keyboard, just pressed whatever like rumba on it, <laughs> and then just started talking over the the, the beat. Right. Surely he's singing in the song though. I wouldn't call it singing really. It's more of just it's more of just talking. Hmm. It's really like you know like when you get into the like the seventeenth verse of um of rapper's delight. And and they're just like, you ever go over to a friend's house and like the food's bad and stuff? And then your friend's like, hey man, come on, have some more food. And you're like, nah. And then like a couple weeks later, you go, you you know, you haven't talked to him in a while, and he's like, hey man, I understand the food wasn't that good. And it's like, I remember it, this. It, it, it seems like somebody has a gun to their head in the studio, and they're just like, just keep singing, just keep rapping. <laughs> and I feel like that's the situation. Like Paul McCartney's children, one of his children was kidnapped. And like a producer called him and said, I'm cutting off your daughter's ear right now unless you make me a Christmas song that in the a next 15 minutes. horrible scenario. And that is why – that is um, – <clears throat> I feel like every radio station that plays that song should be burned to the ground. Wow. And every uh, producer's family member should be not just – Murdered, no, no, but murdered to the beat of that song, <laughs> with like, like an ice pick, but oh. not in vital organs. You no, know? no, 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 because that'd no, be fast. Just, yeah, just like flesh wounds, like into the bicep, into the like the leg meat, um, oh. you know, like into the into the crotch skin, but like just oh, like just every time that bent, 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 every time that <laughs> just it's just it's bad. It's really. I don't like it, <laughs> and I feel like I'm, anyone who does like it is wrong. That's how I, I yell at my boss about that. And anyone who like, says like that, oh, if you ever hear anyone say, mm. I love this song, what you need to do yeah. is take your keys out of your pocket, yeah. put them in between your fingers, and just punch them in the oh. throat until they stop moving. The old Freddy Krueger. I mean, yeah, I guess. Yeah, kind yeah. Of like an Edward Scissors hands sort of thing. The ghetto Freddy Cougar. I yeah. Get it. Um, but um, yeah, I don't. I'm not. I'm not a fan of it. I understand. See, I hate it too. Not quite as badly as this guy. Dave really dislikes it. Yeah, I think he really goes into I, it. I like making fun of it though. A lot. Because yeah. you could say any sentence with anything you I've saying. I've literally never thought of it at all. Like, like you can make it really deeply. dirty or you can make it just like really grotesque or, or just with random things. The latte's hot. The <laughs> oven's on. Like, just make fun, like anything. You the can say anything. And then it's like, doing it like, <laughs> it's like it's Paul McCartney and he's like <laughs> intentionally trying to sing badly. Like it's like. It's huh. not good. It's a shitty song. It's a shitty okay. song. It's a, it, I don't. I want to. I just want to like I right now just thinking about this. Song <laughs> makes what do you want to do? I want to harm somebody. <laughs> nobody Let's take away all these sharp objects. Nobody please. in in particular. I don't know. The pizza guy is going to be here soon, so well, you know, we'll see what happens. Do one that. remote stink guy? I forgot Who about. Who knows? It. We should invite the pizza guy in to be a guest on the show. We should totally do that. I don't think we should do that at all. No. No. Okay. <laughs> it's a bad idea. Bad idea. You think? I mean, <laughs> liability issues. Like, <laughs> He's a f- fucking f- – don't condescend me, man. I'll f- fucking kill you. <laughs> oh, yeah, the couch <laughs> when James Gandolfini yeah. leaves or whatever. Yeah. Condescend me, man. I'll f- fucking kill you. <laughs> Says it all under That's the That's original, the the original fair, guy on the couch. Floyd. Yeah, yeah. Floyd. yeah. That's right. right. Is he the original? Yeah, because remember in Path Bake there was Stephen Wright who yeah, was yeah, on the yeah, couch? Yeah. It was that his name, Stephen Wright, yeah. the kind of bald, long, Stephen stringy Wright. hair? The comedian yeah. guy? Yeah. They killed Killer. And, the, and wait, the connection here is Stephen Wright in 1992 was wrong. Was in Reservoir Dogs as the voice of the radio announcer. Oh, that's uh, oh, Kate sure K- K- Billy's uh, Super yeah. Sounds of the 70s. Well, so 1993, it came out between Pulp Fiction and um, Reservoir Dogs. And arguably, it was one of the best Quentin Tarantino scripts. Which one? Um, Reservoir or uh, uh, True Romance? Romance. Um, but it was not directed by. Uh, by uh, by 
Tarantino, Tarantino. It was directed by somebody else. I don't even know who it was. Tony Scott. But the, the worst. Tony the, Scott. The worst thing about that movie is that goddamn song. That goddamn like steel drum song that plays through the whole movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. I kind of remember that. Yeah. Why did they do that? It was throughout the whole movie. It's like they bought one song for the movie. They got the rights to one song and they played it through the whole movie and it was awful. Right. It didn't even fit. It didn't even fit with the movie. No, it didn't. Yeah. Fuck that song too. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Tony Scott. That's Tony Scott. T yeah. Skizzle, I call him. Yeah, but he's Scott's brother, the guy who uh, jumped off the one of those bridges. Oh, really? Yeah, we well, had cancer, and he jumped off before it got him. Wow. Yes, yeah, last movie was uh, you know he did a lot of those Denzel Washington movies like Men on Fire and shit. Oh, I didn't know that. Domino and a Train movie and the Take Him a Pelham One Two Three remake and oh, right, all those right. same actor, same character. <laughs> Nothing really sends me into a murderous rage anymore. What about Haba Nagila? Although if I send you a picture of <laughs> soup at four in the morning, it might. Oh, dude, that was so creepy. <laughs> what happened? The soup picture. Oh, yeah. From E.T. Highway. When we were Story on Extraterrestrial e. Highway, I, I went ahead and wrote on all the rocks at the black mailbox. Oh, we all know. Um, and, uh, yeah, just listen to episode that, 55. Requested that people send Jay pictures of soup. And Joe Erie pictures of dicks. Yeah. I mean, people happily obliged on both requests. But, uh, you know, Joe's into that kind of thing. <laughs> Joe's constantly subjecting us to, like, he'll find the worst, grossest picture he can find on the Internet. Oh, that's right. And he then send it to us in a group text. Yeah. And we are all subjected to it. That's and then it's, like, justice. on the screen until it, like, goes away, you know? Unless you delete it, yeah. Conversation. I'm always afraid my kids are going to pick up the phone. Be like, why is there a fist in this guy's <laughs> ass, Daddy? Yeah. Well... And then you have to like, sit down to with your kids talk. and be like, you know, when a man likes another man. <laughs> but you don't practice Hanukkah. I don't know. I mean, my uh, Shmuel, my uh, my Gesundheit. neighbor. Shmuel. Oh, that's right. Your neighbor is Shmuel. Shmuel. His that's name awesome. is Shmuel. That is awesome. Um, and uh, he came over to my house the other day and uh, lit some candles with me. Very and, good. Uh, you know, it was nice. He's a, he's, a, he's a good dude. He's a Lubavitch, Lubavitch Jew. What the fuck um, is that? It's kind of like the Jehovah's Witness of Jews. Um, so they don't celebrate birthdays? No, there was no, no they, they're, they're, they're <laughs> trying <laughs> to actively recruit people into the religion. There's, like Judaism is one of those religions that does not actively recruit people. And in fact, if you want to become a Jew, it's like a lot you, you have to go through, like, you have to be refused three times and basically told off before you can actually convert. Kind of like Fight Club. That's um, a really <laughs> shitty thing. <laughs> hey, I would so, like to worship your God. Fuck you. <laughs> Uh, so no, seriously, could I worship God? Fuck, fuck you. you again. So this is the thing is, um, <laughs> you know, you know, you know. it's funny. TJ, you know. TJ Miller used to do this joke uh, about giraffes. He'd be like, go ahead and ask me anything about giraffes. And like he would like say all these like crazy facts about giraffes. And like he'd be like, well, yeah, I bet you don't even know about like blah, blah, blah. And he'd do all these giraffe facts. And then he'd be like, yeah, anyone in the audience ask me any question about giraffes because he did like a – when he was in, like, eighth grade, he did, like, this big report on giraffes, so he retained all this knowledge, and that was, like, this character he was doing. Yeah. So one time I, like, he was at one of my shows, and I was like, uh, what, are the, uh, what are the six subspecies of African giraffes? And he, like, didn't know, and he, like, got all mad at me and stuff. It was pretty funny. What did he say? Like, legitimately mad? No, he was just, like, I forget what he said, but he, like, deflected, like, because he honestly didn't know. and like. <laughs> And he like shot back at me like, "Well, do you know what the subspecies are?" And I like was on my phone, so I like rattled them all. Oh. Off. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll t but you cannot say that ritual abuse of children does not happen. Well, yeah, huh? but they're not fucking satanic drinking blood, fucking cutting them up and shit. Dude, who knows, man? Well, I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Those Hollywood types, those elitists, are fucking crazy. That that whole Merovingian bloodline—that's all they fucking do. I don't know, man. The royal bloodline that goes back. Stars are just like us. I've seen. I've seen that pictures. Mean, that just seems like hey, you have the more. Merovin hey guys, the no. bloodline. Guys? It's a real thing. Guys, I'm not gonna look it up. But guys, oh my God. no, I'm stars, saying my internet doesn't. Stars are just like us. I saw in Us magazine, Chris Pine was drinking coffee just like we do. Get out. Yeah, and also, I, I, Emilio Estevez eats pizza sometimes. <laughs> Speaking you know, of eating pizza, where the fuck is ours? I don't know. It always takes like an hour. If we house. went to White Cottage, we'd be done and recorded and on our way home already. I think that you... you know, that's not true. No, that's pretty true. What you, your voice right now um, is 
kind of sounding to me like simply having a wonderful Christmas time. <laughs> it's getting there. <laughs> it's very hurtful. It's you mean fucks. It's awful. Tell him. So are we going? But you agreed. Hey guys, thanks oh, for yeah, the I Christmas did. gifts. By the way, dude, I was at work today. Like, how the hell? Just saying. It's My presence nice. is enough. I think. Yeah. No. I'm kidding. <sighs> You're not supposed to give Christmas gifts and then make people feel guilty because you gave them Christmas gifts. Is this I a just, Jewish I thing? I felt like I needed to get you guys presents because you're my dear close friends, oh. and I wanted to venison. I wanted to uh, give you something to remember me by. There you go. I love you, Dave. So when you are sleeping <laughs> at like night cigarettes? in a or fuzzy, love. fuzzy, warm blanket, could I make love on them? Oh uh, yeah, you can you can fuck them. I mean, you probably could just fuck the sheets themselves. Wow. Yeah, they're really solid. I think you can fuck them. Yeah. Are these all outtakes, by the way? I mean, I'm not gonna put. I got them. Minutes. So I don't know if you guys know about this, but you know, like the plush, fuzzy, fuzzy, like fleecy blankets that are real soft and fuzzy that your your doggies and kitties like to lay on. Yeah. Um, they make sheets out of those now, and they're fucking fantastic. It's like sleeping inside of a kitten. <laughs> Minus the guts and stuff. Well, yeah. It's like sleeping with with kittens, like tons of kittens. Wow. Like if you were to make a bed out of kittens. Did I tell you we got a rabbit? Yeah, I saw the rabbit. I met it. Did you? Yeah. Last oh. time I was over, I met the rabbit. Very good. It's huge now. Yeah. You should eat it. Tyler takes really good care of it. You can make good soup out of that. No. no. <clears throat> can I get the foot? Tyler's friend down the street, her parents are like... Yeah, you raise rabbits for food yeah, or something? Yeah, they're alternative, you know, like the wife left the husband for another woman, but yet they still live together, the husband and wife. And what? Very alternative. I know a group, okay. uh, a, a family like that, where it's like the husband and wife, the husband and wife are still married, but the wife moved in with her lover. Was it a female? Yeah. Yeah. But no, no, it was a, it was a man, oh, another okay. man. So they have this weird three-way relationship where she goes back and forth between her husband and this other dude. That husband she is says, not a man. She says he that she says that she says that the guy uh, the guy that she moved in with is the love of her life while she's still married to the man who is also the father of her daughter. And oh my god, I did um, like a couple years ago. I was I stayed with them in a house they were Airbnb. And the house was haunted. Like, I could feel it in the house. And I started talking, you know, I started telling the guys and taking pictures and stuff. And I'm like, man, this place is, like, haunted. And the the husband got really upset with me for even talking about it. He's like, that's ridiculous. This is just, this is nonsense. Don't even talk to me about it. Like, and he, like, stormed off. He, like, got mad about it. I'm like, wait a minute. You're mad about that. (laughs) Like, that's what bothers you? You're cuckolding your (laughs) wife. It was, uh, it's, yeah, it's very... Very unusual. I mean, don't, I don't hang out with those people. I don't. I don't. You I know, mean, there are. Pa- pa- listen, I don't want to are... judge people for the way that they live their. Oh, lives I will and fucking stuff. judge all day long. I will that... sit in my angry chair and point. But there it's are, it's there weird. There are polygamy households out there that can work. Yeah, it's and weird. they're all it's, fucked. It's up. definitely very no. weird to me. It's no, I not, don't. Uh, I don't. Up. I don't judge either. I'm not saying he's. Uh, maybe he likes being cuckold. Maybe that's how he gets off. We don't know that. That's not a man. That's no a, man yeah, lets yeah. another man fuck his wife. That's uh, not if a man that's, if what that's what he gets if, off. Yeah. If that's what they're into, that's yeah. what they do. Nope. Exactly. That can work. I mean, it's like, you know, if if you like to see your wife with other women, like, that's not, that doesn't seem weird, right? That would be for, weird for me, yeah. What if you What if you wanted to see your wife with a dragon? <laughs> not, like, not like a man dressed like a dragon, but an actual dragon. Um... I didn't well, think about he it. He stumped you on that one. Huh? <laughs> well, I heard something. That was a Did big pause. Like, no. I heard, I heard your mind whirring. Yeah, I, did, I, th- I, did I thought a, I heard I did get a book about dragons today. I did. Oh. Here. Yeah. From the dumpster? Yeah. Nice. It was the only book that was in the dumpster worth taking. It was like a kid's book about different kinds of dragons. I'm like, that's pretty cool. Okay. Um, Oscar's going to pause because we have like 45 minutes of outtakes. Yes. Put Necronomicon. Put original Necronomicon. Like with skin? <laughs> Fuck yeah. I do kind of like that idea. They would have to leave a review and then contact us on Facebook to let us know they left a review. Uh, no, they can just do the review. No, because sometimes reviews are screen names, mm. and you wouldn't know how to contact that person. So if they leave a review and then tell us on Facebook that that's them. What if two people send you that, like, oh, the, uh, fuckface89, uh, that's me. Got to prove it somehow. Guy. And the real That's not face. my problem. you got to prove it. Okay. <laughs> All right? All right. But, sir, I'm fuckface89. Hey, 
me stick nipples. But yeah, I, mean, I think we should do something special for the thousand. I like the idea of a raffle. We could get something cool from the occult bookstore. Like Kool Aid. Maybe a DVD copy of the skeleton key. Horrible idea. No. Okay. How about one of the things I dumpster dived earlier? All right. So I see we don't have any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what do you want? So gold. We do a raffle. For I like the raffle idea. And a crazy Kwanzaa. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty sixth. Sure. Do you like that idea though? Yeah, that's not a bad. Idea. Thank you. <laughs> I know you want me to have a bigger reaction to you, but, you know, it's one thing to have an idea. Yes. <laughs> That's another two. Execute. Execute. Asshole. Why do I put myself to this abuse? <laughs> <sighs> so damn paranormal. I'm Wait. your host, Jason Knight. Harvey Firestein. <laughs> and with me tonight... <laughs> 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 At <laughs> I didn't think my voice would actually. I thought it would. No, I'm sorry. I thought I had it. Like. Oh, <laughs> she's she's responding right now. I'm sorry. I thought you were laughing. She said, "Oh, ha 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 ha." <laughs> Tell her to be more goddamn creative. Fucking eighteen-year-olds. I'm your host, Jason Knight, and with me this evening is. <laughs> oh, me, Oscar, 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 what? Oscar, bro. Oscar or Spectre. I know we're saying a whole name. And I'm Dave Black. <laughs> oh, they're making fun of me. Blanche. 